This is Hitting the Post, NorthJerseySports.com's original multimedia series talking all things North Jersey soccer. Brought to you by the Bergen County Education Association. Bergen County Public Schools work because the BCEA works with you. Back on Hitting the Post, NorthJerseySports.com's original Multimedia series talking all things North Jersey soccer. I am Corey Doviak being joined by my committed co-host, Cliffside Park Athletic Director John Lombardo, who joins us from his car at halftime of the Red Raiders football game, freezing his kishkas off. Johnny, what's going on, man? What's up, Corey? It's very cold out here, but uh, I figured I'd take a break and uh, talk to you. Yeah, absolutely. It's great stuff uh, being the dedicated co-host that you are to the show. And, you know, season one, episode eight here of Hitting the Post, that means it's getting pretty late in the season. We've done eight of these things already. And uh, the state tournament kicked off in earnest this past weekend. And uh, there have been some upsets flying around. We're going to have a good guest list of uh, tonight for the show. We're going to have Mawa head coach Courtney Corella and – uh, their junior midfielder, Emily Jordan, are going to join us after the Mawa girls upset Ramapo today in the North 1 Group 3 state sectional quarterfinals. We're going to have Chuck Hogan, the head coach of the Dumont boys soccer program, whose team pulled the first round upset over Paquanic. They don't get back into action until Friday, so we'll look back with him at the first round victory for that. But before we get started on all of that stuff, Johnny, let's sum up two things. You being close to the Cliffside Park program, First of all, the historic win on Friday night, the first Bergen County championship for Cliffside Park boys soccer and well-deserved. Yeah, it was a great game uh, by both teams. Probably one of the best finals, uh, supposedly everyone's been telling us that uh, in many years. Uh, hats off to Don Bosco. They played a great game. Uh, our boys came out to play and uh, did what they had to do to get the championship. Yeah, and there was so much emotion around that, too. I mean, what was when you got back to town? I don't know if you followed the bus back or what you did, but did you get back into Cliffside proper as uh, the celebrations took place, or what did you hear about them anyway? Yeah, I was down there. Uh, the kids were well-behaved. I'm very proud of uh, you know the, the support we had from our fans, our community that was out there, uh, teachers in the building. Our principal was there. Uh, it was nice. The kids went around town on the buses while the fire trucks and the police escorted them around Cliffside Park in Fairview. Uh, it was a nice feeling for the kids. There's something that they'll always remember, hopefully. Yeah, and, you know, a nice feeling, obviously, for your head coach, Jim Fusey, but for you, too. I mean, we kid around a lot, but you're a Cliffside guy, you know, 1990 graduate. You've been around the program forever. You know, you played under Coach Ron Merrill. You uh, were an assistant to Jimmy on the varsity team. Uh, your nickname is Hitting the Post from your playing days there. And just how about from your perspective? I mean, do you ever think that Cliffside would get to the top of the mountain like that? I mean, coming from where, always a competitive side, but never uh, until the last, you know, 10 years or so, really turning up the screws and, and getting to an elite status in Bergen County. Yeah, we've, you know, this is the one that's always gotten away from us. Uh, we've been close in years past. Uh, we've always had something come up and, you know, we couldn't get there. And I'm very proud of Jimmy and his staff. You know, Jimmy works hard. You know, he does a lot in the off season that no one sees with the kids. Uh, he's always with them and, you know, he's got their back throughout, you know, the whole, you know, journey that he's had. And that's the reason, you know, these kids pulled it out because they never quit. They never quit on him and they don't quit on each other. And that's, you know, a testament to the program that he's built there. Yeah, okay, so that's all the good news and everything else, you know, and we talked about it, I think it was off the air last week, I don't even remember if we said it on the show, but all of the build-up to the Bergen County final, the, the as you said, the title that has eluded Cliffside Park forever, the one that they really wanted to get, and then they had to turn but right back around on Monday, go into the North uh, 2 Group 3 state sectional tournament as the top seed, playing against a team that nobody knew about, but everybody knew could be a live dog because it's a big school in Morristown, a former group four. They drop down, uh, kick one in late in the second overtime, and then the, the you know, knocks Cliffside Park out of the state tournament, a 16-1 upset. Crazy. How much of that was just – I'm not asking you to speak for Jimmy, but, you know, how, how much do you think that was of just all those emotions coming out and just hard to pick yourself up three days later? 
Uh, it's tough to tell. I mean, you got to give credit to Morristown. They came to play. They didn't, you know, they didn't back down. They took us off our game a little bit. Uh, saw some things that, you know, we normally don't see from us. And you got to give them credit. They they won the game. They did what they had to do to win the game. You know, uh, it could have been a little bit of a hangover, but, you know, there's no excuses when it comes to, you know, this type of play at, at the state level. You know, you got to come to play every game. You can't overlook anybody. Yeah, yeah, it's it's true. Yeah, they earned it, so you, you got to hats off to them. But, all right, so we'll move on. We get the Cliffside update and all that stuff, but sticking in North uh, North 2, Group 3, you look around, that bracket is now completely busted because Cliffside Park, the number one seed, is out. South Plainfield, the number two seed, is out after losing to Passaic Valley. So, you know, it's just more also, testament. Also, num- number four seed is out. The uh, number seven seed. And eight seed are out. So, you know, the bracket's pretty much upside down and up for grabs right now. And that that's how it was last year. Uh, 16 seed Mendham came out of nowhere and, you know, won the section. So anything's possible. Yeah, absolutely. Passaic Valley, the 15, uh, will go on the road to face number 10 Nutley in the next round. That's a wacky one. And Chatham, the 12, uh, will play Governor Livingston, the number four. And the other bracket is Morristown, the number 16, going on the road to take on West Morris. Maybe Morristown is this this year's Mendham of last Cinderella. year. Yeah. Yeah, maybe yeah. this year's Cinderella, you yeah. know. Yeah, and this year Mendham was the eighth seed, and they lost in the first round to West Morris, their sister school. So really yeah. wacky, wacky stuff there. A couple other ones we'll talk about uh, on the girls' side before we bring in Courtney Corella and Emily Jordan from Mawa. Uh, that was a shocking defeat. Ramapo... Law, uh, was the number three seed in the bracket, obviously the winningest program in the history of New Jersey girls soccer, and they got a penalty kick to get called for them, for them in the last two seconds and missed the PK. So Mawa holds on for that 2-1 victory. Also on the, in the girls, uh, Clifton, and the last of the fighting Lombardos, still alive in the state tournament, Stan Lembrick, in penalty kicks against Roxbury today. He got the win. Yeah, it was uh... – Good win for them, and uh, I don't know who they're playing. I know Ridgewood and uh, Livingston were in a dogfight in uh, overtime today, so we didn't get that result before uh, we came on the air. Absolutely. A couple other things that stuck out on the girls' side. Ramsey beat Paquanic 1-0. Riverdale beat Old Tapan in North 1 Group 3, 3-0. Not that it's surprising that Riverdale won a soccer game, but to do it convincingly with three goals against uh, Old Tapan, which had just won a, a good first-round match, it's first time out against Paramus, double overtime win against Paramus. They had some momentum going into that game in Riverdale, as we had Steve Grenz on a couple weeks ago, really playing as well as any public school team in Bergen County. And we said it then, not named Northern Highlands, and uh, it's still holding true there. They'll move on. Mawa will play Northern Highlands in the semifinals, while uh, Riverdale will also be in that round. And the other Wayne one, Hills, right? Wayne Hills. The, they play Wayne Hills. That's right, top-seeded Wayne Hills, uh, on the road at Wayne Hills, and it's setting up for a collision there in North 1 Group 3 between the Bergen County champion and the uh, Passaic County champion if the seats hold. Yes, that would be a you know, great game. I'm sure uh, Wayne Hills would like to get a shot, but don't overlook uh, Riverdale because, you know, like, like you said, they've been playing pretty well of late. Yeah, I mean, he just has it figured out defensively, so they don't give up anything. Yeah. And – Offensively, they have the girl, Rachel Sorkin, who's their all-time leading goal scorer for a freshman in the history of Riverdale, and all she needs is a crack. She gets a goal. They can beat, you, they can beat anybody one nothing if they, if they yeah. can do that. So, uh, yeah, it, no matter who goes through there, that, that North 1 Group 3 section final is going to be a lot of fun. The last one we'll mention before we move on to our interview portion of the evening is in North 1 Group 1 today, top seed in New Milford got a challenge from Pompton Lakes. It was a game that Rich Barton said to look out for Last week, he was absolutely right. New Milford won 4-3 uh, to, to three over Pompton Lakes in overtime. So, you know, state tournament soccer, anything can happen. Anything can happen. And this is a very exciting time. You know, one done pretty much. you got to give your best effort. And uh, hopefully the, you might not play your best as long as you get that one goal to, you know, beat the other team and move on. Pretty much survive in advance. That's it. And for an athletic director, it's an exciting time, too, because the season is uh, winding down. Yeah, getting ready, for, getting ready for the next season, pretty much. Yeah, Richie Barton and I always say that once the state tournament starts, we say that half of our teams lose every game. So we can see the finish line uh, two weeks down in the College of New Jersey. We'll all be freezing on the turf in Ewing. We're looking forward to it. And we're also looking forward to this interview that 
Rich Barton and I did earlier as we caught up with the Mawa duo of head coach Courtney Carella and junior center mid Emily Jordan. All right, Richie B., well, let's bring in two of the participants from one of the big shockers of the state girls soccer tournament this afternoon. And we say shocker, but it's never a surprise when Mawa wins a game. But, uh, Richie B., why don't you introduce this? Because you know what? You've been on the Mawa bandwagon more than anybody else. I've been on the Mawa bandwagon for years, pal. Let me tell you something. From from winning a Group 2 state title to now in Group 3, big 2-1 upset today over Ramapo. We have Coach Courtney Corella. We have center midfielder Emily Jordan. Ladies, welcome to the show. Talk about the big win. Not at the same time. Courtney, you go first. <laughs> well done, Rich. Well, thank you for having us. That's quite an introduction, Rich, so we'll take it. Um, you know, it was a great game. We came in pumped up. Uh, we, we drove down to Chester, New Jersey about a week and a half ago to play West Morris, um, and we gained a lot of confidence from a great game down there. Uh, we're able to build off of it against Indian Hills, and so we stepped on the field today ready to play, eager to take on Ramapo, um, and, and it shows with that 2-1 victory. Absolutely. And, Emily, for you, I mean, it's been quite a week. Against Indian Hills in the opening round, a goal and an assist. Today against Ramapo, a goal and an assist. And it just seems like, you know, I saw you early in the year, you were battling some injuries. Uh, it just seems like you guys have just kept things together long enough to get, I don't know if even if you're healthy yet, but just long enough to, to put the pieces in place to make this kind of run. So just talk about what kind of week it's been for you specifically. Yeah, well, like Coach said, ever since the West Mars game, like we've just gained a lot of confidence, and we've just been clicking really well and playing really well ever since then. And we really wanted to win this game more than anything else, and we all just had such good vibes going into it, and we put it away, and I couldn't be more proud of our team. And when I said Rich Barton was on the Mawa bandwagon, for any casual reader or regular reader of NorthJerseySports.com will know that Rich Barton wrote a love letter to the Jordan sisters after the Indian <laughs> Hills win. Uh, I, I mean, you know, I read that story. It's like, wow, you know, so Richie B., well, I guess, Emily, the question is for you. How is it playing with your little sister before we get a little bit more into this wrap-up thing? From the story that Rich wrote, it's like uh, you two are the best of friends. Yeah, we really have become so much closer since we've been playing together, and she's just a phenomenal player, and our team would not be what it, like anything near what it is without her. And, um, yeah, we've just grown so much closer as sisters, and I feel like she makes me a better player, and I make her a better player. All right, let's get into Rampo. Court, what did you guys do against them? Uh, you're the number six seed, obviously a dangerous number six seed. Rampo was the number three with their only losses coming against I IHA and, and Indian Hills. So, you know, it, it was a tough spot going in, playing at Rampo on their home field. You know, this is Raider country, all that stuff. What'd you, what were you guys able to do against them? You know, I think obviously going in, we all knew the talent um, that Chigaris has. So, you know, we, we tried our best to shut her down. Um, my back, Leah Bush, you know, did a phenomenal job um, keeping that space closed, not really giving her any opportunity um, to get to goal. So, you know, we knew that was going to be the first plan of attack. Um, we also knew that we were going to have to win the center mid, which obviously Emily did, lights out, you know, and she had support from Lexi Madden um, and Blaise Ebenetti. So once we were able to get that center position, it was just a matter of getting the balls up top, running through high pressure and everything, um, and getting some shots on net. Go ahead, Richie B. Uh, you know, we talked about going into that Rampo matchup, how, how much more physical you had to be in this game than you had been in any other game this season. Um, you know, talk about, you know, how your girls really carried out that game plan. You know what? I mean, we just high-pressured every single opportunity that we could. I didn't think Rampo had a second on the ball without feeling a little bit of a, a pressure or at least, like, feet coming towards them. So I think it did put them back a little bit on their heels. I'm not sure that they were expecting us. Um, to come out as aggressive and, and as high pressuring as we were. So, um, you know, I was so proud of the girls for stepping up and, and playing with that intensity and tenaciousness that they did. Emily, I guess the answer to this question is going to be no, but how about the intimidation factor of going into Rampo? I mean, it is one of the, well, it's the all time winningest girl soccer program in the state of New Jersey. All the, I'm sure you know a lot of those girls, you know of a lot of those girls. How did you guys handle that situation where? you know, going into Rampo and then hitting the ground running when the game started and not being in in intimidated and not being, you know, playing sh playing shy early on? Uh, well, we've definitely gone into games like the Highlands games intimidated, and obviously it hasn't panned out for us. So 
we just tried not to think of like the big names and all the girls that we've heard of and just really tried to play our game and know that we're definitely capable of hanging with them and any other team in the county. Court, I wasn't at the game, so just break. What'd you go up one nothing, and then two nothing, or two one? Uh, we went up one nothing, um, and then uh, they came back. Um, Caroline put a beautiful ball in the back of the net, so then it became one one. Um, and then Emily, you know, had an awesome direct kick um, that the goalie didn't make a great save, but she pushed the ball out for a corner kick. So um, Emily was able to shoot a corner kick across. And then our our freshman Lauren Hempley, who's just come to the stage over the past few weeks. Um, was able to put the winning goal in the back of the net. Hmm. How much time was left when that happened? Oh, God. Too much. No, at that point, it was probably <laughs> about, <laughs> about 20 minutes left. And, I mean, listen, in typical human hand style, he brought it to us. He pushed everybody forward. Um, you know, he had about three girls up top. He had an extra player in the midfield. I mean, even the last few minutes of the game, you know, his goalie was basically standing on the midfield. So they brought it to us. Um, you know, they weren't willing to give up, even until the last – couple of seconds of the game where a, a controversial PK was called, um, you know, but, you know, we were fortunate enough to hold on. I think the girls really dug deep in it, and it showed how much heart that they truly have. Yeah, and we're not going to mention any names. We don't do that on the show. We're not interested in making any, you know, making a big deal of it, but uh, a, a controversial penalty kick, to say the least, nobody down in the box. They called roughing in the box. Two seconds to go because at Ramapo, they run the game clock down by the second. The official score is in the uh, PA announcer's booth, he's running the score clock, so you actually know how much time is left. And there were two seconds on the clock when Ramapo was awarded a penalty kick. They missed that penalty kick, so you won that game. And it just brings me back to when I was standing next to you at the Bergen County Tournament two years ago against Highlands when it looked like you had that game won. They ran the clock out, they scored it late, and then they beat you in overtime. So, you know, you seem to get yourself involved. You and your team seem to get yourself involved in some of these crazy outcomes in postseason soccer. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? When they when they made the PK, it was like the first thing that went through my brain. I'm like, oh my god, you have to be kidding! Um, <laughs> but you know what? I, I felt that the girls had worked so hard. Um, you know, and Emily Santos having her back in that, you know, adds an extra layer of confidence. Um, so you know, I just felt that both teams worked extremely hard, but I, I felt this time the outcome, you know, was definitely just. Uh, Go ahead, Richie. Uh, yeah, I want to know, Emily, what was going through your mind? I mean, you know, when you when you play a physical game and you're on the verge of an upset and all of a sudden that happens, I mean, you know, what do you think? Were you thinking already about overtime or were you like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is really happening? Tell me what the thought process was as those final minutes and seconds ticked down. Uh, well, when he called the penalty kick with two seconds left, the girls on the team started crying and breaking down. And I, I couldn't believe that it happened, but I figured we worked so hard this whole game. If she does make it, we're gonna bring we're gonna bring it to him in overtime, and we're gonna put it away in penalty kick, or that she was gonna miss it and that we would win. But I really feel like we deserved it and we wanted it more. And while they're a phenomenal team, I think we just work so much harder. Well, yeah, and it, you know, a great result and court. For your uh, for your next act, you get for your reward a uh, trip to Allendale to take on the two time defending Group Three state champion Northern Highlands. Uh, obviously, you played them in the county tournament, didn't go so well. What do you got to do different this time around? You know, it, it's going to happen sooner or later to Northern Highlands. They are going to lose a game again. May not be the next one against you, but sometimes it's going to happen. What do you think you guys have to do to give yourselves a shot to you know to end that unbeaten streak? You know, I think that our girls finally believe that they can step out on the field and play with anybody. And I think that's the most important thing that we've been missing probably all season um, was that confidence, that, you know, ability to know that we are just as talented as the other teams out there. Um, and I think that's going to be a very different piece to the puzzle come Monday. You know, I think our girls are stepping on the field with some momentum um, and some understanding that, hey, you know what, we don't want our season to end. You know, I always joke with the girls, and I say, if I still like you at this point, then the season's not ready to be over. Um, and it's really how I feel. You know, I, I'm so fortunate to have the girls that I do, and uh, I think we want to keep the ride going. So we're going with, you know, every intention to bring it to Highlands. Uh, yeah. Emily, how about you? I mean, you played them once already. You know what they're all about. What What do you feel like, you know, how are you going to change your game to try to, you know, keep it close and give yourself a chance to win at the end? I think the confidence piece, like Coach said, is just a big part of it. And we know we can hang with them. 
we we hung with Ramapo, we beat them, and they've always been uh, Highland's biggest rivalry. Um, I really feel like we can do it. I had such good feelings going into the Ramapo game, and I have even better feelings going into Highland. I really believe in us. I think we can do it. Good, Richie. You got something else? Uh, Emily pretty much <laughs> took care of the answer there, but, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, obviously confidence is a big thing, but as far as tactically, um, what do you think you need to do differently? Do you want this? Do you want, co- Abby, want me to take this one as your coach? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please direct <laughs> all questions to the, tactics to the head coach. Um, <laughs> you know what? I mean, I think tactically uh, – we, we have to finish when we can. You know, when we played them the first four rounds, we did, you know, get through the box. We broke the defense a few times. We didn't finish. You know, the biggest difference in our last, you know, three or four games is that we've been able to put goals in, in the first half. And I think that that's something that we have to continue to do um, and just get that ball in the back of the net early. So I think we also have to, you know, be a little bit closer in defending a little bit. You know, we've given our marks some space at times. Um, and I think, you know, we have to always maintain that, you know, back, you know, back of the opponent – don't let them turn. Don't give them any space. Um, so I think that, you know, between the confidence piece, understanding what we need to do defensively, um, and then most importantly, putting the ball in the back of the net, you know, I, I think that we have a shot. You know, and they're a phenomenal team. And I know we all joke around, but, you yeah. know, I love Tara. I love Madigan. Um, you know, and I know she's going to have them completely prepared. So it's just going to be a matter of, you know, who wants it more and, and digging deep for the entire 80 minutes. How about the last one before we let you get out of here? We know you have the little one uh, to get to attend to. So last question is, you know, you were starting to build in Group 2, you know, back going back to when the BAM girls won a Group 2 state championship that we mentioned earlier. Uh, good runs in the playoffs since then, a good feeder system that I know you're involved with. How about stepping up into this Group 3 class now? Uh, you know, you play a tough league schedule on your side of the league to get you ready for this kind of thing. So, biggest difference, you know, group two, group three, I mean, obviously you can say Highlands is in there, but uh, do you feel like this is where you belong or or do you feel like you're punching above your weight a little bit here, making it to the sectional semifinals? You know what? You know, the only reason I would say that we're punching a little bit above is because we are, um, you know, a school that only feeds out of Mala, you know, where you start to look at some of the other teams in the the group three and you see that they're regional. So, you know, Ram Post pulling from a few towns, Highlands pulling from a few towns, Riverdale's pulling from a few towns, um, Indian Hills, obviously. So, you know, we're pulling from just little old Mala, you know. So, in a sense, you know, you, you do feel that that weight a bit. Um, but, you know, as you said, we play phenomenal competition in Pascac Hills and Riverdale and Ramsey throughout our league. So I do feel that our girls are prepared um, and they know what the pace of the game is going to be like. And listen, you know, it's it's kind of an adventure, and I think our girls are willing to take it. And we obviously did a pretty good job by upsetting Ramapo today, so we're going to keep going for it. No doubt about it. Courtney, well, I should say the uh, artist formerly known as Courtney Levine <laughs> joining us tonight as the head coach now known as Courtney Corella. I may never get used to that. And right. Emily, The girls still call me Levine, right, Em? <laughs> yeah, it'll never be anything else. <laughs> Yep, and Emily Jordan, the junior center mid for Mawa. Big upset today over Rampo. Congratulations, ladies. Best of luck going forward, and uh, good luck on Monday in Allendale. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Johnny, I don't know how much of that you got to listen to, but it's always one of those funny times here on Hitting the Post where Richie Barton drops off, Johnny Lombardo jumps back in, and uh, an interesting interview there with the Mawa contingent of Courtney Corella and Emily Jordan. Yeah, that's a big upset, you know, upsetting Ron Paul. I guess, you know, Ron Paul, everyone expected Ron Paul and Highlands to meet in the semifinals. And uh, Mauro, who's a solid program, just won group two a couple of years ago. They're, they're no slouch, so this was a big win for them. Yeah, they that we talked about that a little bit in that interview as well, where they had it rolling in group two. Now they're taking a step up in competition to group three. And to get to the semifinals in that bracket, as we talked about at the top of the show, is certainly no small feat in itself. And no small feat in itself, uh, when we talk about that, we'll bring in our next guest. He is Dumont Boys soccer coach Chuck Hogan, kind enough to join us here on Hitting the Post. Coach, thanks for coming on, and I hope you're staying warm. <laughs> thanks for having me, guys. It's better than sitting in John Lombardo's car, where he's uh, currently doing this interview from as well. Interesting, though, for you guys out uh, early, you know, you get into the state tournament. First of all, you're doing a great job at Dumont. A county tournament win last year, uh, another appearance in the county tournament this year, and then to, you know, go on the road and beat a good Pequannock team in the first round of the states. I mean, just talk about how you're feeling. I'm feeling happy, feeling good, you know. Uh, 
it's one of those years up and down. You know, coming into the year, I knew I had a solid squad, probably the best squad I've had on paper in my six years. So I knew we could we could do some damage once we got on a roll. But, you know, the, the season played out the way it was, and injuries just crushed us. So that's why we were up and down. But I think we're the healthiest we've been since the beginning of the year, and I think it's shown on the field now. Johnny, go ahead. Charles, talk about um, how the program has evolved since you've been there. You know, the six years you've been there, I see uh, an improvement every year from your team being on the cliffside side. I see your teams uh, being more competitive. Talk about your uh, program in general. Well, six years ago, I, I said when I'm jumping into this, I mean, I want to go, you know, full head and do this right. So, basically, I sat down with the, uh, the person in the Dumont soccer who was new, Tim Downing, who is a great contributor, you know, good friend now. We, we sat down, we talked, and we devised a plan, how we were going to make build a program from the ground up. I mean, it was a long road. I thought I was never getting off that road. You know, some long nights, some long seasons going, is this going to work? And I stayed patient. You know, I surrounded myself with the right coaching staff, the right people. And, you know, it's now starting to, you know, come around. It took a little bit longer than I had intended. But, you know, now we're starting to see the results. And, I, and I'm happy because when I see the club games and I see the high school games, it's, it's what I envisioned. It's, you know, it's starting to come around. And uh, I'm pretty happy about that. We've talked about that a zillion times on the various different shows that we do on NorthJerseySports.com between, you know, f- name the sport, football, basketball, whatever. With, you know, consistency at the top of the program and the help of the feeder system, that is the only way to do it especially when you're at a public school, because if you, you're seeing these kids when they're younger, they know what to expect as they move forward in the program. I mean, you know, I know up here, I, I live in Northvale, and it's the same kind of thing, too, where, you know, the, the coaches get to know who's coming up. So the continuity there, especially in a small town where you are, not a regional high school, drawn from one town. I mean, you know, how did you come about the idea of that? Have you modeled it on anybody else who's done it differently, or was this – you know, something that grew organically out of uh, Dumont soccer. It just grew between the conversations with me and uh, Tim. It, it wasn't easy. Um, did I make some enemies along the road? <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, because I, I was a firm believer that I took over as a director of coaching for the Dumont soccer club also, and I wanted to get the right coaches in place there too. And, you know, some people do not like change, and yeah. change was coming. And, <laughs> and I'm a firm believer that I wanted, you know, get the parents away from coaching and let the professionals or the the experienced guys do it because there's too much politics in my books that play into, you know, I got to keep this kid because he's my friend, my, my son's best friend. Now I want the best 18 out there because it doesn't help me when they get to high school. So, like I said, did I, did I have some bumpy roads? It wasn't easy. I didn't do it alone. I can't take all the credit. Like I said, I surrounded myself with the right coaching staff. I had the right president at Dumont soccer. Great guy. He's done, everything, you know, above and beyond, I had help. And, and it's paying off. You know, it, it, people are starting to take notice. However, like I said, it was a long road, and I thought I was never getting off that road. But uh, I'm happy at the moment. And I also think that that beautiful facility now at Dumont High School helps too. I mean, the Bergen County Tournament held the round there. I covered the games there. And, you know, what a great place to watch a soccer game. It's, it's a great facility minus the train every now and then. Yeah, but, more than every now and then. It's more yeah. every 10 minutes. But it's it's <laughs> that Brewster's yeah. Millions over there. you got the train going. Yeah. <laughs> right. Johnny, you're dating yourself with Brewster's Millions, but I definitely I know. Get it. What are you going to do? That's my old joke over there. <laughs> I know. You know, you're in the middle of a game. You're managing a game, and you want to get some points out, and you hear those horns coming, and you're like, okay, i got to sit down now because i got to wait 10 minutes. You're right. going to hear me. <laughs> so true, but just you know, it, it, obviously it's paying off. Uh, the 11 seed going into the state tournament. Obviously, you said you were banged up, and then you go out and you beat a Pequannock team two to one, a good Pequannock team, and now you're moving on to the quarterfinals where you'll get another road trip to Mountain Lakes. But talk about that Pequannock game specifically. How did it happen? Oh, Gail, uh, yeah, two games right there. Um, first off, it was our first state win in 12 years, so it was a wow. great boost to the program. You know, to, to finally get a, a win under our belt. But the game, you know, it started off a little sluggish for us. First 10 minutes, the nerves, we were, we were on our heels. Then we got rolling. Uh, we got the plane. We, we, I think we dominated, the, you know, the last 30 minutes of the half. We went up 2 nothing. First uh, 10 minutes into the, the second half, we get four 
golden opportunity from five, four or five yards out. Us and the goalie, and, you know, we're hitting the guy in the shin guards, you know, and he, he made two great saves to really put that game away, and we couldn't. And I kept telling, you know, my coaches, I'm like, we keep this team around long enough. It's, it's going to, you know, they're going to come back. And they got a little, uh, they got a little lucky with a, uh, a bad uh, power kick call that I'm still scratching my head at, at this point. And they made it, a game that shouldn't have been a game turned out to be a game. And, uh, you know, the last 20 minutes, man, my nerves were racing. It was like a la Cliffside Park Don Bosco where the last 15 minutes they had nine corner kicks and about 15 deep throwings in my own third. And that's mm. something we, we didn't do well as a team this year was defend well in our own third. But it was great to finally see the kids just, you know, take pride. You know, I've been on them all year to, you know, block shots, lay, leave it all out in the field. And they actually did. And, man, my defense stepped up big time, winning balls. You know, we're, they were bigger than us. We were winning balls. My freshman goalies started off as a boy. He's now becoming a man right in front of our eyes. So it was just it was a good overall win. The kids were amped up coming home. Um, got a little bad news on the ride home. You know, my my friend there, Jim, uh, had a rough game against Morristown. So I actually felt kind of bad for him, you know, because I had picked that team to, you know, both win the county and the state tournament at the beginning of the year. Right. We have, well, we covered that with Johnny earlier, and it's, you know, we, we we were saying, too, we mentioned it last week on the show that it was going to be hard. I mean, Cliffside has been so close to winning the county tournament over the past few years, and then, you know, all the emotions came out after that game. was going to be hard to pick it up against Morristown. Yeah, especially jumping up to an, another group. You know, it was new territory for them. Uh, right, you don't but, know Morristown, you know. But yeah, when I came in six years, six years ago and I met Jimmy and John, I mean, I just gravitated towards those guys. They were great guys, the personalities lined up, you know, and they had a solid program. And I was like, you know, I want mine to be like that. You know, someday I want to be, you know, my team to be playing at the cliffside level. And, I, and Johnny can tell you, you know, the games at my place, there are some good battles. I mean, there's some good two my cliffside battles going on nowadays. And, you know. Yeah, we should mention that you did beat them last year in the regular season. I mean, let's let's uh, not forget that little aspect of the rivalry. And yes, they uh, the soccer gods. This year. Yeah, the beat, soccer, yeah. God, soccer gods were good to me that last year. Yeah, you better be careful, though. If you keep going down the Jim Fusey, John Lombardo track, you'll wind up as a co-host here on Hitting the Post next year. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy. Well, it'll be an AD again. <laughs> Go ahead, can I, can I mention, John, you bring an element to this show that's just off the charts. You know, the energy and the enthusiasm you bring. Just listen to those shows. The hairs on the back I'm, of my neck stand up. Entertainment purposes, that's it. You've <laughs> obviously been talking to Jim Fusey there, Chuck. No doubt about it. <laughs> so, we talk on a regular basis. Yeah, go is ahead, John. Text, you got is, he text, is he texting you right now as we speak? No, he actually called me. If you guys had called me, he chimed in there. So I guess he knew it was coming. Kind of interrupt. Uh, I didn't Johnny, tell him. I haven't, talk, I haven't talked to him since Tuesday, so I'll say you, got another, to him then. you got another question, Johnny? Or uh, yeah, Chuck, just talk about uh, your game against Al Lakes. What are your, you know, what are your expectations, and uh, how are they, how do they look uh, compared to you guys? Going, you know, I, I like our our chances. I really do. I think if my team shows up, the team that I know that can play, I mean, we can play with anybody. You know it. You saw it. Um, there, there's one thing going into the game. I think they're all like six footers and plus, and that we don't match up well against. So we're going to have to keep the ball on the carpet and not give up these deep corners and deep throw ins in our third because they're going to have a big thrower. But if we can keep the ball down, I think we can hold possession. And, you know, my coaches call me the mad scientist. You know, I stay up late hours devising, you know, game plans on how to, how to break teams down. And I think, you know, from the information I got on Mountain Lakes, I think I, I got the right plan in place that if we can execute, I think we'll be okay. I think, uh, you know, it'll be a great game, and I think we can steal one there. We, we just pulled well on the road. We don't cover Mountain Lakes, and uh, they're probably not listening to this edition of Hitting the Post, so if you want to give us any real secrets, we'll take them. No, I, I can't, because <laughs> if, uh, if I move on, I, there's a good chance I uh, the rubber match against Ramsey. Oh, there you go. I, I, I can't give up too much. I know Jamie will be listening. Yes, he 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 knows the show. That's for sure. Last question, and then we'll let you out of here. You know, it, it's funny since the changing of the alignments and you know groupings and all this other stuff. It makes for some wacky matchups now in the state tournament. You know, I don't know how much you knew about Paquanic, but you didn't know anything face to face against them, even historically against Dumont. Same situation for Mountain Lakes. Do you like this where 
uh, you may not know as much about your opponent uh, as you normally would, you know, somebody in county, in league, who you might play in the state tournament, but they also don't know much about you. Is this, you know, would you rather have that in-depth scouting report of having played somebody head up, or do you like it this way where, you know what, we're going to do what we do, you do what we do, let's play? Me, personally, I like getting the scouting report. Like, we we went out and watched the Quantic, so uh, I knew what to expect against the Quantic, you know, leading into that game. So, didn't have a chance to see Mountain Lakes because it happened so quick. But, you know, I've developed friendships along the road, you know, guys that have played them a couple times. And, you know, I made some calls, uh, you know, and they were, you know, you know, willing to give up some information. But, you know, that's why i got to be on my toes tomorrow and manage the game and, you know, and make the adjustments if I have to right then and there on the spot. Because, you know, sometimes these kind of reports aren't right. And right. They throw it, something out. You, you can't account for injuries. You know, kids playing that didn't play them. So, you know, I'm I'm pretty pretty quick with the management of the game where I can make the adjustment, and the boys know that we have a detailed plan going into the game. If this happens, well, we're going to do this. If this happens, we're going to do this, and I can we can you know pretty pretty much change on the fly if we have to, which is a good a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we certainly first of all thank you for coming on, uh, hitting the post here, even with the arch rival athletic director sitting in his car doing the interview. So. Uh, I definitely appreciate that angle, and I also wish you the best of luck going forward. Congratulations on the win over Poquanek, and like I said, Mountain Lakes doesn't listen, so I'm rooting for you against Mountain Lakes. Thanks, guys, and uh, hopefully I didn't disappoint. Johnny, you stay warm. Uh, I'll, be out in the I'll be out in the car in a few minutes for the rest of the night, so I'll, I'll fear the pain. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good luck. I'm rooting for you guys, and uh, make sure your AD gives you a lot of credit. I've been on his case uh, that he doesn't respect you as much as he should. <laughs> uh, Nick's, Nick's good people. He's coming around. He's uh, slowly becoming a soccer guy. Yeah, so he is. He's becoming, he doesn't want to admit it. He's like the old school football guys. They don't. They want to admit that they, they love soccer. <laughs> He's a closet soccer fan now. We know it. We see it. So, <laughs> Chuck Hogan, the head coach of the Dumont Boys Soccer Program. Thanks for coming on and best of luck. Thank you, guys. Good luck with the show and have a have a great rest of the year. All right, Johnny. Well, I thought that was very magnanimous of you, bringing on a rival head coach. Uh, who's doing good things and really, you know, uh, having Dumont move forward in the state playoffs. And, listen, you wanted to give him some recognition and that. You're a big man, John Lombardo. Yeah, I mean, he's a good coach, and he's turning that program around, and he deserves some uh, credit and some airtime. Yeah, and it's good. You know, I love those stories, too. And I, like I said, just as we get off the phone with Chuck, I I, I have him on, and I'm, it's a great story. And then I think, you know what? We haven't covered Dumont boys this year. So I'm definitely hoping that they beat Mountain Lakes, and then they will play Ramsey probably in Ramsey in a game that I should go cover, introduce myself, and thank him for coming on the show because I thought it was a great spot. Yep, definitely. So Season 1, Episode 8 of Hitting the Post here on NorthJerseySports.com just about at an end here. Johnny, the last question is now what do you do? I mean, football season is – Almost done. You got a half and a consolation game to go, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so- soccer season is in the books. Cross country season done. Uh, they're still uh, they're moving on. They actually have their uh, state sectional, which uh, they might fare in the top three. So they'll probably move on to the state uh, group championships next week, hopefully. Well, what are you going to do with all this free time you have upcoming? I'm going to spend time with my kids and my wife uh, to make up for the time I haven't been around uh, in the fall and the summer. You heard it here first. John Lombardo stepping down to spend more time with his family. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, good stuff, pal. Thank you, and uh, we will catch up next week. Next week, yeah. We're getting into the uh, sectional finals, hopefully, uh, and uh, hopefully some local teams are representing. Absolutely, and maybe we'll even have a fighting Lombardo on if Stan's still alive. Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping he's there, so we got something to watch, maybe. And maybe we should bring in Jim Fusey as a third co-host next week. Ah, uh, maybe we can. Uh, maybe I'll let him step in in my shoes for the week. Not gonna happen, Johnny. You ain't getting out of here this easy. Follow the leader.